Hello everyone, today we are at Universal Studios Orlando, Florida and I've spent here for the last 3-4 days in the free park so we went to Universal Studios, Island of Adventure and Volcano Bay I made all the beginner mistakes but also did some things really really well so all those tips and tricks and things that I learned and if it's worth visiting and how you can save money all the tips you need on your first time visit to the studios I will give it to you in this video. So let's head inside. Okay, the first tip that I can give you is like, yes, you are on holiday, but you still need to plan a little bit if you visit this place and want to make use of it in the most optimal way. Like, you can just approach the park, walk around, enjoy the environment, go on the ride here and there. But if you're really sh short in time, you could visit Universal Studios and Island and Adventure in one day and do most of the attractions. I managed to do all of them by starting at the very first morning when the park opened at Universal Studios. I didn't have a fast pass, I didn't have early admission, just start early. Then I went all the way to Gringotts at far back in uh, Harry Potter and I walked my way around it. By one o'clock, I did all the rides that you could do at, U at the studios, and then with my park-to-park -park ticket, I took the Hogwarts Express to uh, Island of Adventure. And then from there, you just work your way around the park. Like waiting hours are quite long at that time anyway. And Hagrid and the Velocicoaster, you'll just need to queue. So you need to swallow that. And probably on a busy day, it can go up to 120 minutes, but like there are moments it goes down to 80, if you're lucky, 60 minutes, and just do it at that time. The best thing to do is to use the Universal app, and then you can track waiting times. You can even set a reminder to be notified when a waiting time gets below a certain threshold. And in that way, you can make the most optimal use of your day here. next part is single rider lanes. Are they really worth doing? Well, it really depends on the ride. There are rides where you have two people sitting next to each other, such as the Velocicoaster or Hagrid's. I would say it's not worth it. Nine out of ten, you're slightly longer or slightly shorter. It's around the same time anyway. And it's better for me to move slowly, constantly through a line and go through the nice queues rather than moving not at all and missing the nice queuing lines as well. And that also brings me to the very part of like if I would have a choice and waiting times are not that long the very very first time for a ride I would do the normal line anyway because with a single riders line you missed all of the experience beforehand and it's quite a big thing already to have that whole story laid out of the ride that you're going through like the Gringotts one it's beautiful from the beginning you have like an edit like I won't spoil where you have but you will miss all of that if you go through the single riders lane yes it's faster but you will miss the experience. So the very first time of the ride, do that, and afterwards you can um, still do the single riders lane yeah. anyway. Oh, hey, Jess, I can use some help too, pal. Yeah. All right, go low. All the way over here. Oh, yep. catch it. Go ahead. Yeah. difference between the three parks well you have Universal Studios which is very nicely decorated it has an amazing stunt show another very funny like show about how things are dressed up and stuff about dressing and horror um, <laughs> there are less thrill rides here so it's more about the experience the Harry Potter part is in both parks so that's in both the studios as in Island of Adventure so this here is Diagon Alley and then you have Hogsmeade on the other side with the castle then 
Nef Island of Adventure, way more frail rides, more roller coasters. In principle, you can spend longer in Island of Avenger, I would say, than in the studios. And then you have Volcano Bay as well, which is the water park with all the water slides. If you need to skip something, I would say skip Volcano Bay. And if you're really tight on time, then go for a one-day park, park to park, that at least you can explore both ends. So what about the last park, Volcano Bay? Is that worth visiting as well? Well, I was lucky enough that my ticket included all three parks and I had enough days to explore it as well. Like the UK offers, UK Universal Store offers uh, for 300 something pounds. Basically for a three day entry, you get 10 days entry. So if you have enough time here, more than enough to explore this very quietly. So Volcano Bay, I surprisingly enjoyed it. I'm not really into water activities or like I love to snorkel and dive but like water parks are not really my thing but I quite enjoyed it and even though I was on my own if you're with a group you'll definitely enjoy this way more than being alone but still even even alone I enjoyed this for five hours which um, you like there's plenty then enough time to explore everything and if you come here in October it's not that busy and you can do all the rides you can do all the food things and then um, yeah it's uh, I would definitely still recommend it if you have the time do it! Oh yeah. And for people that uh, don't know how to swim, there's still plenty of things to do, even if you're uh, not a good swimmer. So, yeah, there are a lot of like, there's a lazy ride, there's a lazy river, there's a fearless river. Um, I think there's only one slide where you drop down in the end where you need to be able to be a swimmer, but all the rest you're able to do without being a good swimmer, basically, to give you an idea how it works. So, when you arrive, you get a wristband and some of the rides here, or some of the slides, you can tap in your wristband before you enter and then you enter a virtual queuing system and that will tell you on your wristband how long you still need to wait and when it's your turn to get back to the thing, which means that in the meantime you can do such as the Lazy River or Fearless River or one of the other things where you don't need to queue up for. And that way you make optimal use of your time. It's a really good system I really like how they do that full queuing system here. Let's talk about pricing, like it's not cheap to go to Universal Studios. I paid £330 from the UK store and I think that's the best deal if you go for a long period because it's £330 park to park for all three parks, 10 days access. So if you would go for three days or more, that would be probably the best deal. Just go to the UK website for wherever you are in the world and buy it from there. Then I paid for the hotel just a little bit under £400 for a double bedroom in Hampton Hilton just near the studio so you can walk from there which then gives me the benefit of from the airport I only had to take the Uber to the hotel and from the rest there I could just do everything by walking which is a great money saver as well free breakfast included so make sure you're full in the morning and then somewhere around four o'clock I went to Wimpy's which is the a very good deal here in the park as well it's an island of adventure and there You'll have a burger with some curly fries for around $16 or something like that, which keeps you full for the rest of the day as well. So I think that's like money-wise the best option to do. If you go shorter, have a look around probably in the American website, just a one-day ticket park to park is probably the best option in that place. So the best thing to do when you visit the park is to wear comfortable shoes and pack light. Like normally I'm the one who will use a backpack, I have a bottle of water with me that I can refill. Forget all of that. Just take your phone with your park ticket and an ID and, and uh, maybe a bank card just in case your contact list on your phone doesn't work. But nothing else. There are water fountains around the restrooms and some of the queues anyway. So you can drink water all along the way. and. Besides that, some of the rides, there are lockers, free lockers available, where you can put just your loose belongings in there, but those lockers are really, really small. So if you have something more like a backpack, it won't fit in there, and then you need to go for a paid locker. So to avoid that, and keep things within budget, just travel really light, and uh, you'll be able to drink uh, 
with those water fountains anyway, and that's the most important thing, I would say. Action! Look, the biggest question is, of course, is it worth visiting? Well, it's a lot of money, and if it's worth visiting, it really depends on you. Like, I can't judge if Disney is any better than Universal. I went for Universal just because it should be more fun for adults to explore. But the whole environment, as you can see, like just before, the, like the castle in the background, here with Hogsmeade, Jurassic Park on the other side, it just gives a really, really, really good vibe, and it brings back that ch childhood in you. But it's a lot of money, and I was lucky enough that at least my flights here were paid. I don't think I would be paying from Europe all the costs to come here and just do a fun park. But if you're in the US and in the area, yes, for sure, spend, like what I did, three days, it's, it's good because you can explore it slowly, you can do things a couple of times over, it gets cheaper in that way as well. But definitely, I would highly recommend you to visit Universal Studios.